My name is Alec Lures. I'm 14 years old. I'm a freshman in high school, and I'm from down in Ventura, California. Um, I'd first like to say that I am beyond honored to be able to take part in this amazing event. Thank you, Diane and Ekta, and um, everyone at the Golden Gate Institute for believing in my work enough to invite me here and for believing that youth have a legitimate place at the table. <laughs> so. So two years ago, I founded my own nonprofit organization called Kids vs. Global Warming. And now we've merged with the Alliance for Climate Education, a new nonprofit based out of Oakland. There it is. <laughs> um, our mission is to educate high school students about the science of climate change and empower them to take action. So I've given over 70 presentations about global warming um, to schools and environmental groups all around California. And I've spoken to over 10,000 students teaching about global warming and promoting the message that we as youth need to be involved in making changes. After my presentations, I always get students coming up to me saying that they're really empowered to make a difference and that they're ready to go out and change the world. And I think the most empowering part about my presentations is that I'm the one giving them. <laughs> when, well, not like that, but... Um, I didn't really mean, yeah, anyway. <laughs> OK. <laughs> any one of their peers, if any one of their peers was up there giving a presentation, it would be really, really empowering. Because when they see one of their peers up there presenting, they think, if he can do it, so can I, because I'm just like them. And through the Alliance for Climate Education, we plan to educate 2 to 3 million high school students in the next year. So I'm also working on a few, activism, um, a few community activism projects, the biggest of which is called SLAP. Um, which stands for Sea Level Awareness Project. We work to put up these poles down along the beach in Ventura, where I'm from, to raise awareness of the future sea level rise because of global warming. Um, and we're working now on expanding this project to 10 cities across the coast of California. So also, we're working on a few media projects, um, because that's a really, really easy way to reach youth. And uh, so here is the first video. It's actually kind of funny. I made these images about a year ago, um, right when I was first starting to, first learning how to use Photoshop. And um, it just kind of sparked one night. I stayed up till 2 in the morning making all these images, and like it was up on YouTube the next morning. So it was, yeah. <laughs> so that is pretty much what I do. And, um, but I never knew anything about global warming at all before I saw Al Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth. Was anyone else here inspired by this movie? Anyone? OK, cool. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's kind of what I thought. Um. <laughs> But seeing this movie changed my life forever, and it totally changed my whole view of the world. I went to school the day after seeing it, and I was kind of talking about it to all my friends, talking about global warming. Um, and that was the first day I found out that there were actually people who disagreed with global warming. Um, because one of my best friends starts kind of going off on Al Gore is a psycho, global warming isn't real, um, and all this stuff. And, and I was like, wait, what? You don't believe in global warming? Um, I was flabbergasted. I had no idea what... I, it just didn't make sense to me at all. Um, and I was really angry that he was saying that, and I wanted to argue with him, but I really didn't know enough about it to really debate with him for long. So I went to school, or I went home that night, and I stayed up till like 2 in the morning, again, researching all I could, all I could possibly learn about global warming. 
And I put together my first presentation just to prove my friend wrong. Um, and it was that night when I first realized that I needed to do something about global warming. I decided I had to educate other people my age about these issues because we are going to be the ones who are going to be affected the most. And I decided I wanted to give presentations just like my newfound hero, Al Gore. And so I wrote to his organization and I asked if I could be one of the 1,000 people he was originally training to give his slideshow. And, but when I applied, they rejected me. They told me I was too young. Um, yeah, boo. <laughs> but um, but I, I, really, I didn't really let that bother me, so I just decided to do it myself. <laughs> so, so I began giving presentations all over California. And um, I was speaking at schools and at panels on conferences. And I had given over 30 of my own presentations before I finally achieved my goal. I finally got to meet Al Gore. Yes. <laughs> um, I was so excited to meet him. I had told him how I applied to be trained, how he rejected me. Um, and so Al Gore ended up personally inviting me to his next training session in Nashville, Tennessee. So as of right now, I'm officially the youngest trained presenter of his Inconvenient Truth presentation. <laughs> The reason I'm doing all of this is because I have heard the call. I have realized that my generation, the youth, will be affected more than anyone else by the climate crisis. We are going to have to grow up and face the consequences of what is done or isn't done <laughs> now. One of Dr. Martin Luther King's main messages in his I Have a Dream speech was, now is the time. And then was. 1963, when he gave this speech, was the perfect time for African Americans to stand up and demand their rights. Because it was right at the height of all the racism and hatred that had been the way of thinking for millions of people at that time. But this same message can also be applied to the current environmental crisis. You see, now is also the perfect time to confront global warming. Right now, at the beginning of all the disasters, now is the time. Now you all get this. You all understand that now is the time to confront global warming. And so do millions of other people all over the world. But what a lot of people are missing, and what a lot of people don't quite understand, is that now is also the time for youth to be leading the change. Um, we are the ones who are going to be affected most by all of this. So we need to be the ones standing up and leading the movement. It's actually really easy to inspire youth. It's actually much easier than you'd think. Youth can hear the call. I've spoken to over 10,000 kids over the past year, and I see the same thing wherever I go. They truly get it. We are already somehow in tune with what is going on with the planet. We may not know all the details, but we sense that there is a crisis. And we are ready to do whatever it takes to save the planet for our generation. So my point is this. Youth are naturally in tune with what is the most urgent and most important issue of our time a lot more than most adults. And just to demonstrate my point, um, I'm going to play you a sound. Who can hear that sound? Raise your hand. OK, cool. <laughs> OK, imagine that is the sound of the Earth calling out for help. We are all here because we hear this sound. We hear the call. We understand that um, we have to take action on climate change. And, um, but it really isn't this clear for everyone, is it? Not everyone can hear that sound. Um, the sound, the real sound sounds, um, sorry. OK. The call sounds something a little more like this. Who can hear that sound? Raise your hand. Raise your hand high if you can hear that sound. OK, now look around the room and notice who has their hand raised. What do they all have in common? They're all youth. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there, are certain, there are certain sound frequencies that only young people can hear. They, and they lose the ability to hear after a certain age. In fact, I'm playing a sound right now that only people under 20 can hear. And youth like me have the ability to hear not just this frequency, but the Earth's call as well. I wish I could show you the faces of kids when they finally realize that their voices matter. You can see it in their eyes. 
Kids naturally have the motivation and inspiration to make a difference. All they need is a little push. And that's where all of you can come in. We youth are smart. We are creative. We are in tune with what is happening to our planet. All we need is a little bit of direction, support, and mentoring. But mostly, we just need to be taken seriously. Not just put outside in a youth tent. Not just given something to do. <laughs> youth need to be seriously and genuinely included in every meeting that is held. Because we are smart now. We are created, creative now. If we wait till we're out of graduate school, or have our PhDs, or have done some breakthrough research, or become senators or something, it'll be too late. <laughs> we need to be involved right now. We are the last unrepresented group of society. So I challenge all of you to include youth in every aspect of your work. Al Gore says that we have the moral authority on this issue. So the voices of youth need to be heard. I'm launching a new group called C3Y, the California Climate Council of Youth. I'm bringing together a dozen of the smartest, most creative, and most motivated high school students all over California. We're going to meet regularly to discuss, brainstorm, plan, and do projects, statewide projects that will really make a difference in the fight against global warming. We're planning on going to Governor Schwarzenegger um, to ask to be included in his new climate action team program. There's no youth representation there, there, and we want to be included now. Larry King once said, nobody cares about what's going to happen in 50 years. Well, that's easy for him to say he'll be dead. <laughs> he, he may not care what happens in 50 years, but I do. I do care. I do care, and my children will care, and their children will care. And when I grow up, my generation is going to have to deal with what's already been done to the planet. And the difficulty of that job depends on, fully depends on what actions we take now. Now is the time. Now is the time to hear the youth voice. Now is the time to take us seriously. Now is the time to transition to a new American dream. Now is the time to stop global warming. People tell me all the time, it's great to have kids involved. You guys are the future. And it's true, we are the future. But we are more than that. We are here now. We are the present, and our voices do make a difference. Let's now work together. Let's work together to change the world and not just occupy it. Thank you.